welcome. And today I'm going to be teaching you how to create some beautiful cherry blossoms. This is catered for beginners and we're going to go step by step. So let's go into what we need. We are going to be starting with Mars Black, Titanium White, Light Blue Permanent, and this painting does use a good bit of pinks and purples. So we are going to be starting with Fluorescent Pink, Medium Magenta, Prism Violet, Brilliant Purple, and... Um... Um... <laughs> Quina, Quina, dude, I'm not even going to try. Magenta. I prefer using paper plates for my palettes. They're just easy and disposable. One thing I do highly recommend having is a slow dry blending medium. This will just help slow down the process of drying with acrylic paints, and it'll help make the blending process just a lot smoother. So this isn't necessary to have. You can always use a little bit of water. As for brushes, I am going to be using a flat brush, a couple angle brushes, and a small palette knife. All right. Let's get started. So we're going to be starting with some titanium white, some light blue permanent, and I've used a little bit of slow dry blending medium. For now, we're going to take a little bit of the light blue permanent, a little bit of the titanium white, just to kind of make a little bit of a double, double color brush stroke. And I want you guys to practice making brush strokes just like this, moving your elbow in and out and kind of rotating your wrist a little bit. So let's get started. We're going to cover the whole background with this. Let's go a little bit heavier with some light blue permanent. Just dab in a little bit of titanium white in there. And just continue to move that elbow in and out and rotate that wrist like that just to get some nice brush strokes in. You can go a little bit heavier with the light blue permanent. using each side of the brush and just focus on getting that paint on the canvas. Don't worry about it being too thick on the canvas yet. Just focus on painting a little bit thin and we'll, we'll start to build those layers up. Just making long diagonal brush strokes. And let's start back at the corner again. letting some of that paint fill into spots that it wasn't in already. Now when you go over the paint again, it's always nice to add a little bit of water on your brush. And what that does is it just lets things kind of blend together a little bit easier. Not too much water, just a little bit. also helps keep some of that paint wet a little bit and not drying right off the bat. And just continue to have that paint get all the way to the other corner of the canvas. I prefer using the diagonal method just because I love the way it creates some motion. Nice and easy, not really worrying where the paint is. No, no proper method to it, just let that paint get on the canvas. There's no messing this up. Just a little bit of paint here. Now the nice thing about acrylic is when you're working on a canvas, it's always nice moving to a whole different side of it. And it lets the side of this, of, of this painting start to dry and when you're finishing in another corner you always go back to it and you can pretty much start getting your layers built up again because acrylic does dry pretty fast. So it's kind of gently running my brush over the parts I've painted on already just to let that paint kind of fill in in little spots. And when I do this, I'm not really adding paint back on my brush. I'm kind of using what's already there. Now, if I were to push a little bit harder on my brush, I could get some of that paint off like that. But that's not what I'm wanting to do. I'm just kind of wanting to gently 
kind of massage that paint into there, into the canvas. The beautiful thing about painting, it's all about learning, learning the brush and learning the paint, the way it dries, the speed it dries, and the pressure you're apply applying with your, with your brush. Sometimes when you want it to be a little bit darker, you push down a little bit harder. When you want it to be a little bit lighter, you can just gently get that paint on there. Now I'm gonna let this dry for just a few minutes. I'm gonna clean off my brush in the meantime, and then we're gonna hit this with another coat. All right. Whoops, we're about ready. <laughs> that is it. All right, we're about ready to make another coat on this painting. So let's get started. And I hope you've cleaned your brush off really well. Basically throw it in the dishwasher is what I'm trying to say. No, I'm kidding. But um, you don't want your previous paint to start drying on your brush. It'll really, it'll really kind of get in the way of proper brush strokes. So make sure it's clean. So let's keep going. And you can see immediately how the paint is starting to layer up nicely. Where there's white, paint white over it again. Where there's blue, paint blue over it. And watch as your painting starts to pop a little bit. I'm already loving how the colors are starting to form together. It almost looks like a motion of wind in between here. And that's kind of what I want, because I want these cherry blossoms to be moving in the wind. Don't forget to get the sides of your paintings. The sides of your paintings are friends too. Don't forget about that. I went a long time painting and I just didn't care about the sides, but I started to learn to appreciate to not forget them. Now painting does take a little bit of time, a little bit of patience. And when you start to feel your brush not, not gliding over the paint yet, it's, it's usually still, still drying. So just kind of move to different spots. Remember, it's all about understanding the feel of your brush and the feel of the paint. We are ready to start making a tree. All right, make sure you let this dry for about a minute or two and get yourself some Mars Black ready. Now I switched out my paper plate palette and I've got Mars Black on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to envision where I want my tree to be. And I'm thinking I'm going to have the base of it here and I'm going to have branches go all throughout it. So let's focus on painting from this angle all the way to this angle and kind of make almost like a snake shape and just a straight line. Now, as opposed to the background where I painted using the side of the brush, I'm actually going to use this brush as a liner and I'm going to move it to the side just like this. Very gently. And just like that. And from there, I am going to see how thick I want this tree to be. And I'm thinking I'll make the base of it about here and kind of get it thinner right there. So let's go right around, right around here. Just like that. And let's start focusing on filling this in a little bit. I'd like this to dry a little bit more before I finish it up. So I am gonna start focusing on making a couple other branches while we wait on that to dry. And let's just try to imagine where the branch kind of separates and splits. So I'd like to get another one right around here. That branch is gonna be much thinner. And then maybe it 
it splits out this way too. Maybe it splits again. Let another branch come right out right here. And maybe it splits right over here. Branches overlap, so it's okay if they kind of meet and go in different directions. I kind of like how it's looking so far. And to be honest with you, this might be an important lesson right here. This actually isn't how I wanted this painting to look. I was hoping actually to make this tree a little bit thinner and kind of get some more branches coming all out from, from there, but I ended up making this a little bit thicker. And the important thing to learn about painting is you are going to make mistakes. Things aren't going to look how you want them, to, want them to at first, but it's all about having another game plan. Basically figuring out where you can go from there. Um, so don't, don't be afraid to make these mistakes. These are, these are really important because it's very easy to be hard on yourself when you paint. It's a very patient thing. You are going to need to have a lot of persistence at it and, and you're going to learn. And that's the beautiful thing about it is turning imperfections into perfections. And things don't have to be solid right off the bat. You can make, you can make it kind of see through a little bit, just getting a little bit of that paint on there, a little bit of that black on here. And we're gonna let that dry and we're gonna go hit it again. Lots of layers in painting. Now you can see I'm brushing sideways here and I have a little bit of a tight spot right here. So what I do is I'm gonna turn my brush a little bit and it's gonna help me get into these tight areas right here. Kind of diagonal, learning how to move the brush. The thinner it gets, the more you turn it. point where I want this Mars black to start sticking on here and bolding out a little bit. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I am kind of going over the spots a little bit heavier, pushing my brush into the painting, letting that paint get off the brush and onto the canvas. want all these branches to be nice and solid black. One helpful thing to do that I love doing when I paint, and I didn't start doing it at first, I actually learned this from somebody, um, is to always step back when you're painting. So give it a second, let things dry, and, and step back, you know, five, ten feet if you can, and really look at your painting from that angle, because you'll really start to, to realize, you know, where, where you're lacking, where you feel like you need to kind of focus some more paint on, things like that. It's, it's something that is super helpful. Remember the sides of, your, sides of your painting are your friends too. Don't forget that. It's okay if you're getting outside the lines a little bit. Just keep painting loosely. It'll all come together at the end. Man, I am actually getting so excited for this painting because it isn't how I wanted it to turn out, and that's the exciting part. So we're gonna we're gonna really turn this into something cool. These cherry blossoms are gonna be very vibrant, and it's gonna it's gonna be awesome. Just wait. All right, now that we've gotten these branches bolded up, guess what's next? You're probably thinking flowers. No, you're wrong. 
more branches. So let's paint a little bit more branches. We're gonna make them uh, really thin. We're actually gonna switch out to our smaller angle brush and let's just get some really thin branches going here. I kind of even let these run through and overlap a little bit. So let's just kind of go right around here. I'm using the side of this angle brush, not pushing down too hard. And as I let go, kind of gently pull away, make a little bit sharper of a line like that. Let's get a few more of these going here. Very gently. And I'm gonna start gently pulling away using just that corner, just that corner of the brush to kind of make it pop up there. On a couple more spots here. We're not gonna go too crazy with these, but we do wanna have a few of them. low with this because we want to use this corner of the painting. See as I get to the edge I want to just start pulling away let that line fade out. start getting into making some blossoms. So we're gonna start with some darker colors first. Let's start with your darker violet and let's start with the um, light purple. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start getting these flowers in the background. Um, I do, if you've noticed from the beginning, um, I did say we are gonna be using a palette knife and I'm also gonna be using a small angle brush because I'm sure most of you actually have an angle brush rather than a palette knife. So I'm gonna show you how to make some blossoms with this and some blossoms with the palette knife. Now, if I, if I haven't mentioned already, make sure that you clean your, clean your brush off from any of the Mars black, clean that really well. All right, let's get going here. Let's find these smaller branches that we made and let's start making little X's for them. Just focus on little X's for now and just put them in certain spots. You can go a little bit thicker with them. You can go a little bit thinner. All different shapes. Just keep making little X's. Just on these smaller branches. And kind of skip patterns. Have a little bit of gap of um, no, no blossoms because we're gonna put some different colors in those spots. Just wherever you choose on these on these branches. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of the lighter purple. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one little line through the X's on the side. Just one little line like that. A little thicker through some. Then I'm going to take the light purple and I'm going to make, I'm just going to make its own little X's here and there, not worrying about the violet too much. And if I do have some violet on my brush, I'm just going to blend it in. What I'm going to do now is if you have a palette knife, I'm going to switch out to that and I'm going to kind of do the same thing with that. Just taking a little bit of paint on my palette brush, or palette knife. And I'm just gonna kinda add little X's there. Really like using the palette knife sometimes to add some, some really good texture. I'm not worrying about too much detail on these blossoms, just because since they're smaller branches, kind of like further away. I'm not going to focus too much on those details. All right, I'm going to go back to my brush a little bit now.
and I'm gonna continue the same thing, taking the light purple and pressing down kind of, not too hard, but a little bit harder and making thicker sized X's. different spots don't try to think about it too hard just kind of look and put that paint there and the nice thing about violet and the light purple is just start mixing them again and kind of making shades in between all right I'm using medium magenta now and that's gonna be the pink that you're really gonna get out of these cherry blossoms and let's start adding those same methods Making little stars. You want to go a little bit heavier on the magenta um, versus the, the violets and the purples because that's usually what cherry blossoms are known for but getting that purple in there just really helps make the other colors pop. See, I'm just kind of going on the edges of these thicker branches here. Now don't worry if your painting isn't looking exactly like mine. The important thing about painting is that you start to, to understand the things you're doing and you start to realize that sometimes it might even be your style. You notice yourself kind of painting a certain way and you know, it usually ends up looking good and you can kind of learn how to expand that style. If this is your first video of mine or, or not, you might notice on, if you actually look at my other videos, you might notice that I, I do love doing a lot of diagonal blending. It's kind of been something that I first started with when I, when I painted and I learned to make different versions and variations of it and I learned to love it. It just became my style. And that's what art's about. Art is about just finding yourself and what kind of artist you are. And don't be hard on yourself. It takes time. I remember when I first started as an artist when I was a kid, and all I painted was crocodiles. And I loved them. But every time I painted those crocodiles, I learned to make them a little bit better. Learned to make sharper teeth, learned to make more details. And eventually I went away from drawing crocodiles. But I learned it and I learned a style and, and I went with it. So just focus on that. Painting crocodiles, not kidding. Now on some of your thinner branches, go ahead and overlap. Overlap some of those blossoms you made already. Just put some right next to them. Right on top of them almost. Just kind of let them overlap. Let those colors all kind of blend together. We want a full blossom here. You might not even be, be able to see some of those branches towards the end, but maybe we'll put some details. Where you have the thinner branches is really where you want to bunch up the blossoms. I'm gonna step back and see if I like that, that fullness. I might want a little bit more on there, we'll see. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of fluorescent pink here, just to get a little bit more color variation in there. And if you don't have this color, that's okay. Um, you can always mix a little bit of white into, a, into another color, like a purple or one of your magentas, and just kind of add just another color variation. These colors all beautifully blend together. All right, we're gonna let this dry a little bit. And from there, we're gonna take some white and we're gonna start kind of putting little dots in these flowers. Now, before we actually end up putting some white in these flowers, uh, while this is drying, I, I want you to start focusing on this area right here and make sure it's dry because what we wanna do is we're actually gonna make a big cherry blossom flower right up front. And this one's gonna be fun. So this might be a little bit of a challenge for you, but 
uh, we're gonna go a little bit slow with it and I'm gonna give you some tips and techniques to really make this, this cherry blossom. Just right around the middle area right here, I just want you to take a pencil and draw a small, very lightly, draw a small circle right there. Mine's about the size of a nickel or so. What I want you to do is kind of think of a starfish and draw one line up like this, kind of gently curved, and then another line around the right, just like that. And then give it two little legs. Let's give it another one right there. And then another arm right here. All right, let's grab our Mars Black here. I'm gonna use the edge of this brush and I'm gonna just kind of draw a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect and don't worry if it doesn't turn out perfect. And from there, I'm gonna use the side of the brush and kind of draw my line up like that. And just start making its arms and its legs. Just like that. See our little starfish? He's a little thin, but <laughs> he's there. And from there, these are gonna turn into the petals. On some of these petals, you wanna make some unfinished triangles. So just kinda go like this. Make one little angle right there, and then make another little angle down here, just like that. Kinda see how that's creating a petal? And on this one, let's kinda make a little arc. Just kind of connect these lines right here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Look at that right there. See how this, this blossom is starting to come together? On this next one, let's kind of make another little arc, but as we as we arc it, let's kind of make a little bit of an M. One like that. And then make another like that. Go and do the same on this side. Just like that. And now this bottom one is where we want to give it a little bit of an effect. We're going to make half line, just a half line right here, and then give it a little bit of a lip. Like that. And then go ahead and just kind of connect it right there. This is going to almost give it an effect of that blossom falling down. All right, so I'm going to take some medium magenta and I'm going to just start filling these in a little bit. I'm actually going to go a little bit over this black right here. That's okay. just want to get these petals a little bit sharper here. It's okay if you see a little bit black underneath. We can actually just, just layer on top of it. So I'm start filling these here too. And I'm just going to go out a little bit with this one. This flower is going to have a good bit of layer, so don't worry too much if it's not looking how you want it to look at first. It's gonna actually be a lighter color. It's gonna give it an effect that this blossom is falling. See, it's starting to fade away, so don't worry about making mistakes. You can always paint right over. Our detail is really gonna come in when we get this titanium one. All right, let's let this dry a little bit, and let's start focusing on some of these flowers. All right, I'm switching to our smaller angle brush, and I'm gonna be using some titanium white here. Kind of using the angle, the corner of your angle brush and just start poking little white dots. Go ahead and find a couple of spots and take your titanium white and even dip it in a little bit of magenta if you like. And just kind of make a very light, very light purple, just like that. Still mainly white. And then put a couple of X's there. And a few more titanium white X's here. And actually going right back over them with some magenta. It's really cool. It actually, it actually kind of blends in on the canvas. Looks really nice. Uh, let's go back to this flower down here. 
I'm gonna actually take some titanium white into this. Mix with a little bit of medium magenta. Just right into this gloss. Focus on, you know, when we were making this blossom, we just really wanted to focus on making shapes. And then the detail can come in there. Creating some depth and then some detail. Just keep it in, keep it on blending until it looks how I want it to. Remember, when I said to get get used to the brush and understanding it. While I'm doing this, all I'm really doing is I'm, I'm pushing the paint in the direction that I want it to flow, just to let that petal kind of bend a little bit, just like this. Just like that, kind of makes it look like it's falling. Now we've had a little bit of a catastrophic failure since the last clip and Mike realized that his phone battery died, unfortunately. We have made a little bit of progress since the last one and what we've done is we've added a little bit of dark magenta towards the center of the blossom and ended up lightening up towards the outside, pretty much adding some medium magenta with a little bit of titanium white on top of it just to give it that effect. Next, we're gonna go in and outline with some Mars Black. Kind of curving and turning the brush as you go along these curves right here. Just remember that starfish you were drawing. Just really focus on the twisting aspect of your brush. Kind of go like that. Practice like that. And practice as you move. Up and down. I'm going to draw around this circle again. And focus on twisting that brush. Take your darker magenta and just kind of start dabbing little dots in here. Next, you're going to want to really clean your brush off and grab some titanium white. All right, and very gently, start making some lines up, just right to the bottom here. Dip your brush into the magenta again. Get a lot of magenta on there and start making some little circles at the ends of those white lines. Let's even put some brilliant purple on there. From there, some titanium white, and put some blots on there. And that's about it. I'm done with my painting, so I am going to sign it. Thank you so much for joining in on this beautiful cherry blossom painting. I hope you guys really enjoyed and learned something from this. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.